Hey guys, it's Alex Pierce. Today we're going to be talking about Octane for Blender and using Cryptomats in Photoshop. So let's just go ahead and jump in. I'll just explain this scene a little bit. I got this model from Sketchfab for free. I'll leave the artist information in the description. Um, I didn't do anything crazy with it. All I did was I applied a few textures from uh, LiveDB. And then, uh, and then I did add one monkey because, you know, I always, I always got to have a monkey in there. And I added depth of field to my camera for a very specific reason. We'll talk about it later. But if we zoom in here, you can see that uh, this monkey is uh, out of focus because uh, of the depth of field. So just keep that in mind for when we get into Photoshop. So first step is you have to go to your output properties. And you don't have to worry about the regular output, but if you come down here, push output, the very bottom of this, there's octane output and it's off by default. So you got to check this on, open this up. You can put in a uh, prefix. So before your file will say something or postfix as well. Uh, and then export mode, choose export multi-layer. File type, choose EXR 16-bit linear, 32-bit. Uh, gives some gives Photoshop some issues. There's probably a way to change it in Photoshop, but 16-bit is plenty for most applications. S and then EXR compression, you can choose whatever you want, but DWAA is sort of the way to go. It's DreamWorks animation, and it's a lot smaller file size, and the quality is, is still amazing. So once you have this all set up, the next time you render, this is going to save uh, wherever your output is. So for me right now, I have it saving to um, it, it, these two slashes just means that it's going to save to my the same folder where my blend file is saved. So, um, but you can put this wherever you want. And now the next thing you need to do is go into uh, the view layer, and then I'm going to go ahead and close all this so you can see what it looks like. So, in the view layer, you have these passes, right? So if you click on passes, you can there's a, there's a million different passes that you could open here but we're gonna look at some specific ones. So you can check beauty. Beauty is the same as combined. Um, you don't really need environment, but I have it checked just so you can see. And then these are all off by default, by the way. And then for now, I'm just gonna cl click these. So diffuse, direct, indirect, and reflection. Close that for now. And then I'm gonna to go to cryptomat. And then I'm gonna check object node and mat node. Those are the two that are important right now. This is going to let us, uh, it's gonna create a mat for all of our materials. This is gonna create one for all of our objects. And then, yeah, that's all we need for right now. But you could obviously, you could go through here, you could um, check Z depth, you could check uh, ambient occlusion. There's a lot of different layers that you could add here. But for today, we're not gonna worry about any of those. <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and render. Okay, the next thing you need to do is you need to go to exr-io.com download the program and then run it, install it. If you have Photoshop open, go ahead and close it while it installs. And then after it installs, open up Photoshop. Okay, after it's rendered, find the EXR and you can click and drag it into Photoshop. I'm just gonna open up a new one. And now if you've installed EXR IO correctly, you'll get this option and then you can say open. Okay, and now that we have this open, you can see, bring this up, you can see we have like a hundred layers. And uh, at first, if this is your first time working with EXR files, this is gonna look very scary, but don't worry, it's really not that big of a deal. On top, we have our combined. Um, we, don't, we don't need this Z depth, uh, so we don't really need Z depth, but uh, we can click down here. And if you do Alt and left click, it'll solo that, that layer. So we can see this is our diffusion. This is dire direct diffusion, indirect diffusion. This is our environment, it's the background of uh, 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 HDRI. This is just our reflections. This is the reflections indirect, which is basically the same. And then uh, all these are the objects. So all these you see it says object layer. Well, in my, in this particular uh, render, I had lots of different objects. So if I solo, in fact, I'm gonna, okay, this is the monkey, so I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna keep the name in case I need to check it later. So, but I'll put monkey at the beginning, so I know that's that. And then let's find let's find the hood as well. Let's see. There we go. You could go through and name all these if you wanted to, but obviously that's sort of overkill for our purposes. 
I'm going to go ahead and bring these to the top just so I can have them to, to use later. And then at the very bottom, you see we have matte nodes. So again, I'm going to solo this. And you can see these rims share the same material. So they're in, in one mat together. That's all one material. Tires are one material. And then uh, this is the plane. That the, there's a plane at the bottom. So this one might be important for us. Push plane. Glass. And here's the car. This is going to be important. So basically, this, this car right here, this is probably there's probably 60 objects that are that are independent of this. So we could use just the hood or just the door, or just the mirror. But if we want to affect the entire material, we can use this mat. So we're going to go ahead and bring this up to the top too. So we have basically three mats that we're really kind of concerned with. Uh, and then we should have the floor as well. So, right, yeah, okay, let's bring this one up. Okay, so now that we have those those layers here we can do a few different things so the first thing i want to do is instead of using the, this combined pass i'm going to basically recomposite these other passes so i'm going to put the diffuse on the bottom and then i'm going to go ahead and unselect all these so we can see the diffuse with no uh, reflections or, or the direct lighting on it now I can turn this on and go up here to normal and I can change to add. So you can see it adds the reflections. And then I can do the same here. Linear dodge add. And that adds some of the indirect light. And then this adds the direct light. And I think we, we don't we probably don't need any of these other ones for now. This will be good. So this is really amazing because now what we can do is if we only want to reflect if we only want to affect the reflections like let's say we want to get rid of this um, uh, this reflection of the monkey what we can do is we can go into just the reflection channel uh, and let's see I'm just gonna paint with black and it's just affecting the reflections so it's not affecting the area around it if I zoom in you'll see So now I've gotten rid of the, the reflection on that monkey from that scene. And, and, and this is maybe a, a more realistic example. Say this is too bright, we can take this down a little bit. You see that? Undo. So you, you get an idea of what, what could be done uh, using just the, reflecting, the reflective channel. Let's start working with the crypto mat. So let's look at the car paint first. So I put these all in one folder. For now, I'm not even gonna worry about this. We're just gonna use the combined to show the to show all the crypto mat stuff. So if we want to do stuff with crypto mats, we don't have to think about how it's gonna affect one channel or the other. It's just going to affect the combined image, okay? So what you can do is you can hold down control and then left click on this mat can't left click on the title you have to click on the mat and then you can do a few different things here one you could you could it's 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 created the selection right you can see that so i mean the very basic thing you do is just delete <laughs> delete that whole stuff uh i'm actually going to let me let me do this i'm going to make a few duplicates okay and then for now this will be fine so what you can do is you can control left click on this mat and then you can click on the channel you want it to affect and then you can go down here and push add layer mask and now it's made a layer mask with just that selection so now you can see we have the car as its own layer and this is where it gets really cool because now i can click on this image and i could say Let's say the client wanted us to change the color of the car. Well, we could do it here. We can just go, well, we want to change want to change the car to be a little bit, you know, let's make it yellow or let's make it green or purple or blue. Let's bring it down. Let's bring it up. Let's make it darker or lighter. We can affect it um, just the paint of the car and we could do a pretty amazing job uh, even just using these very simple tools. And, and obviously if you're, if you're um, a Photoshop expert, you could do some really amazing things in here, I'm sure. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with this, actually. I think I kind of like this, this dark red here. So now let's say that now that we've changed this color to red, we want the floor to be different. So we can just come up here. We can do the same thing. Um, so I'm going to turn this one on. I'm going to hold down Control and left click on this mat. Click on the layer that I want it to affect and then go down to Add Layer Mask. I'm going to soil this just so we can see it. So you can see this mask is only the floor. And then now I can do the same process. So I can say, uh, okay, so in this image, let's say I want to paint. Let's say I want to paint something, okay? Uh, I can do paintbrush. Let's do 60% opacity. And I'm just going to paint on this purple. And you can see it's only affecting the floor, including under here. You see that? I could, this would be, you know, I could obviously do this without these mats, but this makes my life so much easier. So now I can change this to, to a lot more purple. I can even do it more stylized if I wanted to. Obviously, you could spend a lot of time uh, perfecting this or doing whatever you want. And then now let's look at the monkey. Um, so we got this monkey. I'm going to left click, click on the layer that I want, go down to layer mask, turn this on, solo it just to make sure, yep, that's good. Now, before we even do that, let me look at the monkey here. This is the whole reason I was, I was bringing up the monkey. You can see that we have that depth of field, remember? We have the uh, depth of field on here. And so the there's this blur around our monkey and you can see that's in the mat itself. So, so if we look at, let's just go ahead and look at the hood of the car as a, to example, as an example, see how the hood of the car is, is pretty sharp. It's not hundred percent sharp because we, we still have shallow depth of field there, but compared to the monkey, it's, this is a sharp line and this is a uh, very, it's feathered is, is I guess the word I'm looking for. So if we come back up here, let's turn back on our layers here. So if we look at, if we, go to this, uh, where's the monkey mask here? Okay, so this is the monkey mask, okay. So now if we affect this monkey, so if we just use the, the brush again, oops, nope. You don't want to affect the actual, you wanna make sure you're on your image when you're, you're doing this. I shouldn't say that. So now if we wanna affect this monkey, Let's do, let's continue our painting here. It's going to take into account that feather. It's gonna automatically, that mat is going to feather it appropriately. So it matches with the scene. Um, so it's really pretty, pretty amazing. Okay, let's look at if we needed to change a specific thing. So let's look at the hood. So if we look here, we're gonna look at the hood. And I'm gonna keep this off just to make it simple. So, yeah, we can do the similar thing where we could say, you know, we want to make some adjustments. We want to make the curves. Let's adjust the curves here. And we can make just the hood, you know, a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, or let's say it didn't match another part. We could use these warming filters, change the way it, the lighting is hitting it. So you can save this as, you know, you can export this as a PNG or whatever, but you can also, if you go file, save, now you get an ERX, EXR option. So you can choose that you want it to be TWAA and you can choose all the, the settings here and you can write this to the file. And and if you're new to EXR, you know the, the main benefit of EXR is that you have all these layers. So being able to save this as well, keep all these layers so that in the future you can come back to this and, and do it again, sort of like a Photoshop file. Um, is, is pretty incredible. And then the other thing you can think about is this also works with video. So you could do uh, EXR frame sequences. That's what, you know, any major studio they are using, they're not using ProRes or MP4 or whatever. If they're doing visual effects, they're using EXR image sequences. And you could affect this on a video level as well. You could affect just the hood uh, on, on the sequence in, in a video, which is pretty amazing. So Okay, that wraps up this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and let me know if you have any questions. Take care.